Patel, who joins me. And uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the representatives of Comelec, the ICT, and the other representatives of government agencies. And uh, of course, the NGOs, uh, civil society, and stakeholders in the electoral processes, like every citizen of the Republic. Um, thank you very much. The eighth public hearing of the committee um, of uh, electoral reform and people's participation with the Committee on Science and Technology is hereby called to order. And um, the uh, chair declares the quorum with the press to Senator Villar. And I uh, think that um, Senator Villar and uh, Senators Recto and um, um, Senator Angara have also evinced their presence or although uh, only representatives are here for the moment. Um, may I therefore call on my committee secretary, attorney Dana Alberto, to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons, to remind all those of uh, the House rules for the first virtual meeting or hybrid meeting of the Committee on Electoral Reforms by video conferencing and others who are in the, in the, in the uh, vicinity of the Senate. Okay, Attorney uh, Dana, please. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge our distinguished guests, namely from Commission on Elections, Director James Arthur B. Jimenez, from the Department of Information and Communication Technology, Yusek Emanuel Reca Infit, Director Jose Carlos Reyes, Engineer Ariel Rodriguez, Mr. Florante Espiritu, Attorney Elias Omar Sana, Mr. Alex, Alex Dita, Director Leo Urbistondo Jr. From Department of Foreign Affairs, Acting Vice Chairman Edgardo O. Castro, Ms. Riza Jamila S. San Juan. From DBM, Department of Budget and Management, Ms. Michelle Calica. From Department of Education, Mr. Abram Abanil. From Lente, Philippines, Attorney Helen Graido. From TPCRV, Mr. Romel Bernardo. From University of Massachusetts at Amherst, I'm Professor Jonathan Ong. From Lamfrel, Mr. J.R. Contreras. May I know who else, who else has not been called, please? Okay, that will be all, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. We have two separate items um, <laughs> on the agenda. Uh, if you could turn off, please, all your other devices, because uh, we, are seem, we seem to be getting uh, uh, too much ambient sound. But uh, let me say that today we have two separate uh, bills and resolutions pending um, on different topics. The first one from our uh, uh, Senate President Pro Tempore, Ralph Recto, urging the Commission on Elections and the DICT to devise some tool to detect foreign interference in elections. So uh, um, may I, of course, uh, put a little context. As we are well aware, as early as 2017, there was the beginning of what has now become known as the tech clash or uh, the backlash against big tech. And uh, this certainly began with taxation issues in Ireland against Apple and several other companies. Thereafter, it evolved into antitrust uh, um, issues in the United States. And of course, of late, the uh, most notorious takedown has been the Twitter and Facebook and other accounts of um, President Donald Trump of the United States. Curiously, we have now seen a backlash to this tech clash deriving from the Europeans led by Prime Minister Angela Mark Merkel of Germany, who immediately said that this was a uh, problematic uh, takedown 
the ban being perhaps a threat to the fundamental right to free speech. We also heard that uh, Prime Minister Macron of uh, Paris, of France, echoed this uh, European sentiment by saying that unlike the United States, our regular audits and more transparency should be imposed by state regulators on technology companies. Uh, the uh, issue in Europe has been heightened by the uh, recent imprisonment of the Russian dissident Navalny, who is also very concerned about state interference um, in uh, these affairs. So um, we would like to call on um, Professor Jonathan Ong, uh, given his uh, time zone where it's quite late in the evening, and we'd like to uh, understand his uh, um, conclusion that, in fact, the Philippines is patient zero in the global information epidemic, given that the combination of influencers, bloggers, fake accounts have weaponized social media um, to incur distrust. I'm not certain that I've actually summarized uh, the reading correctly. So let us call on Professor Jonathan Ong. Thank you so much for having me, Senator Marcos. Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah, um, it's 9, uh, 9 p.m. here in Virginia um, and happy to share with you uh, my research. Um, so um, together with colleagues um, in De La Salle University, also Australia National University, I've been doing research on Philippine elections and social media in elections. And of course, um, our first investigation was looking at disinformation campaigns um, in the 2016 presidential election, but we also examined the 2019 elections and what has changed from 2016 to 2019. So it's, of course, commonplace um, to say that the Philippines is patient zero in this fight um, against this uh, disinformation. The whole notion of troll armies being unleashed online um, um, is a common expression. Um, our argument um, in our research is that it's important to understand how the Philippines actually mixes and merges a whole range of disinformation operators. On one hand, um, there are those um, private industry actors um, who serve as political consultants of politicians who mastermind campaigns. So hindi lang naman siya digital media and social media, but the entire array of uh, mainstream media um, working with journalists and seeding main uh, narratives um, uh, using a combination of campaigns on mainstream media, press releases, false speech and these kinds of activities, but also using influencers and also micro level influencers on social media. So a lot of these campaigns are um, strategically coordinated with somebody at the top. Um, um, uh, together with an army of influencers. And ito are, they could be like celebrities online, um, people who are popular online, but they can also be micro level influencers. They could be operating parody accounts or meme accounts na parang akala nyo nagpapatawa lang sila. But at some point, they're also seeding um, memes and posts promoting a politician or attacking their opponents, right? And then at the lower level are those fake account operators. So um, the argument in our report um, in 2019, and so I'll just summarize briefly, I know um, this is going to be a long meeting, is that we haven't really done enough from 2016 to 2019. So parang nag-flourish palalo yung disinformation industry. So in spite of fact-checking from journalists, in spite of academic research that we uh, try to do um, independently, um, there hasn't been enough um, focus um, and responsibility assigned to people at the top. Parang nakilala po natin um, certain um, names um, whom we call fake news purveyors, fake news queens. However, we haven't really come up with a comprehensive enough framework that will penalize and really hurt people's um, uh, 
um, finances and, and really um, uh, introduce financial disincentives to PR firms, advertising agencies, high-level political consultants who are actually those who are marshalling all of the resources of all these online trolls and influencers. And so yung argument po namin in our report is um, for the most part, this information is actually pretty local. Um, even though it is important for us um, to um, secure our online spaces from foreign actors interfering in our electoral discourse, um, it's important to acknowledge how a lot of our disinformation is locally produced. However, and I just wanted to say this before we engage with a the theme of foreign interference, is that um, um, my research that uncovered a network of accounts coming from China um, and Facebook had taken down these accounts. Um, and it was quite um, interesting the timing in which they released this research. They released this research over a year after our, our elections in 2019 and a, a few months before the U.S. elections. And so one could be thinking about um, um, to whom was Facebook performing their accountability and responsibility to. Were they really being accountable to us in the Philippines or to, or to the U.S.? Um, uh, uh, electoral process. And then number two is that ang nakita namin examples of foreign interference in the Philippines was actually um, foreign inter entrepreneurs working with Filipino PR firms and Filipino political consultants. So these are entrepreneurs um, who have very um, who are invested, um, who wanted to advance business interests, um, infrastructure projects locally, and they were funding the digital campaigns of certain mayoral candidates um, in the Philippines. So local level campaigns, not so much national. And so here, um, the the before we get to kind of like the digital operations angle, there's a question here around a gap in our transparency mechanisms around around accepting foreign funding. Do we have enough kind of audit mechanisms to create disclosure mechanisms? Na um, natatrack natin uh, kung saan nanggagaling ang pondo ang funding ng local politicians and kung um, interest ba to ng ibang bansa. So I'll end there um, I, I'm, and I'm happy to answer um, any questions. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, if my colleagues will allow, uh, we recognize the presence of uh, Senator Francis Tolentino and uh, we welcome his input into this debate that's uh, very uh, new and vibrant. Um, I'm a little confused, Professor Ong, by uh, your conclusion. What do you recommend? It appears that you caution against government regulation and that, in fact, you say, on one hand, we have not done enough and these uh, purveyors have actually flourished. On the other hand, you are saying that we cannot fight illiberal practices of disinformation with illiberal responses. So what is it that you'd like us to do? economic, diplomatic, and or criminal penalties. So it appears that at least with big tech and Facebook, they are open to regulation from uh, uh, state uh, states and governments. In your case, you seem to be saying that we shouldn't do that. Am so, I you reading this correctly? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Senator Marcos. Um, so, um, yeah, as an academic, um, we're very careful, we're very slow and nuanced in our recommendations. So, ang argument po namin is, yes, we do need interventions. We actually need a lot more research and multi-stakeholder collaborations of academics, journalists, um, government actors, um, cybersecurity experts, um, lawyers, and the COMELEC to be working with each other, um, um, finding ways to support COMELEC, finding ways to, su um, to support um, cybersecurity investigators. Um, however, we caution against any legislation that will, that might introduce um, 
more harms into the process by um, uh, and that could include exerting too much control over social media conversations such that it might lead to self-censorship, chilling effects, and silencing um, yes. if it becomes uh, too overly uh, punitive. So um, so it's about, uh, so ma'am, if I can just uh, uh, summarize, it's more about um, audit mechanisms where people uh, researchers, journalists, governments um, could be check um, um, providing checks and balances for each other. So having multiple sets of eyes on the same data, as opposed to um, uh, controlling the decision making of who to take down, who to ban um, from the platform to just one person or to one entity. So that's what we're most concerned about. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, actually, uh, I think the developments recently post uh, President uh, Trump's ban um, were on the other end. It was the state that was concerned that uh, overly punitive action derived from big tech. Baliktad, parang ganun. So, nagkakabaliktaran kung sino ang dapat mag-regulate. There's an element of self-regulation. And uh, Facebook um, has actually sent us a position paper saying that uh, they would be open to economic, diplomatic, criminal uh, penalties. And at the same time, I think uh, we are all with you in um, the regular audits that are necessary, as well as the transparency mechanisms, information requirements, and information sharing requirements, and uh, research that are necessary. Um, and this is the tack that the Europeans have taken. The uh, Americans have been more or less fair, but I think with these recent developments, eh, so thank you very much. And uh, we agree that a very careful, very conservative and nuanced approach uh, should be taken given that this may infringe on everyone's fundamental right to free speech. Thank you. Are there any questions from Thank Senator you. Tolentino or Senator Coco, in which case uh, we could also proceed to hear the other uh, resource persons? Pakinggan muna natin. Ayan, si Senator Coco, Arian. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, Professor Ong is based in the U.S. And how, how are you able to detect the uh, so-called... Uh, in influence or participation at the local level pa of, uh, <laughs> of some of these entrepreneurs eh uh, i thought you would be you were you would be able to remotely detect at the national level but at the local level i'm i'm surprised how did you, yeah, you uh, how did you do sure. this sir yeah uh, and I would um, be very happy to share our methodology so um i'm an academic researcher i'm filipino um so um, our 2016 research um, was based on ethnographic research. Um, I was in the Philippines. I had local research um, teammates. I had an academic who was also based in De La Salle University. Um, so what we did um, was actually uh, um, interview and begin with interviews with political consultants and ask them about the process of conducting a digital campaign. Paano ba nag assemble ng social media campaign? Sino-sino yung kasama sa team? Um, paano kayo nagbabayaran? Ano po yung kontrata? Um, and also, can you show us examples of yung mga um, social media accounts? Um, and through that process, um, nakapag, uh, we also followed online. We call this digital ethnography. And so qualitative method po siya, where we, we would be watching a lot of YouTube videos. We would try to get to know the different personalities of people online para alam namin yung narratives kung ano yung nasasabi nila and that's um what i also wanted to address um with regard to the proposed bill of um senator recto he talks about um uh developing a tool for monitoring disinformation um academics would argue more than like one technological tool or fix this is not solved by technology alone this is um, solved by people, by people who understand stories, narratives, and the entire scene of the um, in the Philippines. So, hindi lang po siya isang tool that will track 
um, or extract material and data, which also raises a lot of data privacy concerns. Um, we're very cautious about with um, our decision to publicize certain kinds of information mm -hmm. of those that we were able to track. So I hope you find a way to also um, uh, work with researchers who are very ethical in our in their approach that are not really just investing on one data system or tool that claims to be doing that. So that's a lot of hype that we try to um, uh, step back from. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. We recognize the presence of Senator Cynthia Villar. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if uh, there are no other questions from the other senators, um, has Facebook, um, uh, Secretary Dana, has Facebook sent a representative or is it merely a position paper that was submitted? She only sent a position paper, ma'am. They sent their regrets yesterday. And ma'am, Senator Revilla is also present now. Oh, Senator Revilla. Okay, I don't seem to see him yet. Okay, thank you very much, Senator Revilla. Um, uh, with that, perhaps we can invite the COMELEC to uh, comment on the uh, resolution. Um, after all, it's both COMELEC and DICT being uh, instructed to come up with these uh, magic tools and devices, certainly not a uh, silver bullet by any means, but a combination of efforts. So, baka gusto ninyo mag-comment, uh, Attorney James? Uh, wala po kayong audio. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Uh, um, and thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, my, my Our commissioners are asking leave uh, because we have an unpacked session today and we are deep in the preparations for the Palawan plebiscite. So they sent me here to uh, present a position uh, supporting the call for this resolution, for this uh, for this course of action to be taken. Democracy is under siege, ironically, from the very technology that was supposed to turbocharge the democratization of society. Beginning with the national and local elections of 2016, social media has increasingly been used to a unduly influence voter turnout. Second, obfuscate the information environment around elections. And third, basically erode public trust in the electoral system, political leadership, and government institutions. For this reason, the Comelec believes that uh, PSRN Field 542 is timely and relevant, particularly in view of the potential for coordinated, inauthentic social media behavior to influence the coming 2022 national and local elections. The response that the COMELEC sees uh, to this threat of cyber-enabled interference entails three broad intervention categories. First is deterrence, second is mitigation, and the third is education. For deterrence, the COMELEC calls attention to the foreign intervention clause of the Omnibus Election Code. Section 81 of the Gaspong Bansa 881 uh, makes it unlawful for any foreigner, whether judicial or natural person, to aid any candidate or political party directly or indirectly, or take part in or influence in any manner any election, or to contribute or make any expenditure in connection with any election campaign or partisan political activity. While it can be argued that this provision is broad enough to encompass cyber-enabled interference in the election process, there is some question whether it can be made to apply to the use of social media. It is recommended, therefore, that Congress reassess BP 881's interference clause to take into consideration new developments in communications technology. As for the social media platforms, while Facebook has in the past proven itself willing to work with the Comelec, the Commission feels that much more can be done in the matter of enforcing the rules that require political advertisements to disclose ownership of the, of the ads. Similarly, the Commission believes that social media platforms can be more responsive to take down requests for violations of campaign rules and regulations. In the matter of mitigation, interagency election integrity task forces might be a good idea because the COMELEC lacks the resources and ex expertise to actively defend against coordinated inauthentic behavior 
it is recommended that some sort of interagency election integrity task force be established to assist and perhaps advise the COMELEC in dealing with cyber-related interference in the electoral process. As for the social media platforms, they have of their own initiative recently undertaken measures to combat the spread of disinformation. By convening a technical working group composed of the COMELEC and representatives of these social media platforms, it might be possible to increase the efficacy of those anti-misinformation measures, as well as to discuss possible passage of legislation, first, requiring political advertisers to adhere to a set of integrity standards, second, requiring the creation of a publicly accessible archive of all advertising on the platform, and finally, requiring social media platforms to make public advertis advertisement targeting algorithms to make those public. And finally, in the matter of education, since disinformation campaigns target the public, no response would be complete if it did not include a program to educate the public to become more discerning consumers of information. To this end, it is recommended that the Department of Information and Communications Technology undertake a massive and comprehensive education campaign intended to improve the capabilities of the public to detect, reject, and report this information. I would beg the committee to, re to remember that this is not a specific nor an exclusive problem of the COMELEC. Coordinate the responses of government agencies to identify disinformation campaigns, and finally to raise awareness about disinformation and how to fight it in general. Respectfully submitted from the Commission on Elections. Yes. Thank you. Shall we listen to uh, the ICT and the OST first, uh, colleagues, um, before we pose any further questions on the government sector? Um, perhaps we can call on uh, the ICT next. Yes, Secretary Dana. Sino yung representative ng the ICT na narito? Under Secretary Emmanuel Reyka in po, ma'am. Okay, you Yuseka Intik, please uh, uh, please make the uh, the ICT position. Kaya ba natin to? Uh, 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 I think Comelec has been uh, very candid in saying that they simply do not have the technical capacity and they're, uh, they are recommending that in fact an integrity task force for elections, interagency uh, election integrity task force, nagpapasaklolo na yata sila sa inyo. So, anong masasabi at tama itutulong naman ninyo? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and, and Honorable Senators. Thank you for inviting us in this meeting. Uh, as for the position of the DICT, uh, we concur with the need for this resolution and support it completely. As to the suggestion of Director James um, of creating an interagency uh, a, a, task, a task force for the integrity task force, we will also fully support that. In fact, uh, in terms of tools, ma'am, we have the tools to help in the detection and possibly um, uh, also look uh, detection as well as initial investigation to the purveyors of, of these uh, fake news and other manipulations for the elections. Uh, we have the necessary tools, but we, we would need the proper mandate to do an investigation because the Cybersecurity Bureau does not have a law enforcement jurisdiction. As for suspicions of manipulations, we just need uh, we, with this task force. It would be best that we could. Uh, it, this task force would serve as the starting point for the lodging of an investigation, and and, and with that, uh, the DICT can help in the sabing ni Sir James detection in also in, uh, put the deterrence for the, uh, pro the proliferation of such uh, fake news and other manipulations. As for the education, po, uh, we can also help uh, in the upcoming elections as we will help also in cyber hygiene as well as the conduct of proper, uh, uh, the proper conduct in social media. 
Madam Chair. Thank you, Paul, Madam Chair. We will Thank submit you, our position paper after this meeting. Uh, Yusek Mani, maraming salamat. Pero tama ba yung narinig ko that uh, we have the tools? Parang uh, punong-puno kayo ng kumpiyansa samantalang uh, uh, sa Amerika, sa Europe, medyo nangangarag na sila dyan eh. Bakit tayo kayang-kaya natin? Totoo kaya yan? Siguro ka uh, ko si Professor Jonathan Ong, ibida mo naman sa amin kung ano yung mga tools na kakayanin gamitin. Sige po. Our cybersecurity management platform includes the uh, uh, OSINT tools and WebIN tools. But what we need are the guidance kung sino yung mga suspicious na mga pages of which we will need uh, law enforcement help kasi uh, we cannot do the we are using this for to safeguard our critical information infrastructure. That's the mandate of the Cybersecurity Bureau. But if need be, with the help of the law enforcement agencies like NBI or PNP, ginawa na po namin yan dito sa nung latest na COVID yung last year, ba? Maraming mga So yun po ang gamit namin. So we can do the initial investigation. Malalaman namin kung nasaan banda ang uh, kalimbawa, given may nag-purvey ng fake news, malalaman namin to some extent sino yung underlying profiles and we can help submit this to Facebook or Twitter to help them uh, curtail yung proliferation of such fake news. Uh, Pero in the first case, ang sinasabi mo, dapat i-identify yung mga suspect ng NBI at ng PNP. Kumbaga, itutuloy nila lang tapos hahanapin ninyo online. Apo, ma'am. Tama po, Madam Chair, because we're not in the concept naman of witch hunting or hunting. Kailangan may mag-complain, mag, mag, mag tapos we can investigate further. And then once we gather the case, we will help the necessary law enforcement agency submit this to the appropriate channel. So pwede natin tulungan ang Facebook to, to, to cut down such purveyors of fake news and whatever po. Okay, so... Um Pwede natin tawagin ngayon. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Kaintik, and uh, we can call the OST and the FA. Uh, nandiyan ba, uh, Comsec Dena, yung uh, the OST? Kung may idadagdag sila? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, Mr. Rage Kalyaw po. Okay, uh, Mr. Kalyaw. Meron ba kayong uh, position dito sa resolution ni uh, Senator Recto? Si Engineer Banson rin po, ma'am, is online. Okay, if um if uh, anyone from the DOST could uh, simply uh react or respond to uh, this um, resolution as well as the positions already made by uh, different resource persons, please. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, this meeting. And uh, the DOSC does not yet have an official position on this, but we do agree that uh, fake news and disinformation is a big threat to democracies worldwide so especially during election time uh we what, are what can the ost contribute to the effort to detect uh, false information and put a stop to this yes ma'am uh we also believe that parang technologically uh, there is probably no single silver bullet yet that we can develop that will immediately solve the problem overnight we, we agree with the suggestions of COMELEC, the, the three-pronged framework. Uh, DOST can help on the education aspect as we believe maybe that is the, the long-term solution to, to this problem. Uh, we have uh, people who can uh, uh, work with on the educational campaign with uh, the ICT and with uh, COMELEC on this. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So it's more in the aspect of uh, media and digital literacy that you can uh, come in, not in the actual deterrence, litigation, and other aspects. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. We, we can support in those other areas. Uh, we, we believe it's more in the uh, mandate of the ICT. 
Sige, okay. Maraming salamat. At uh, siguro pwede natin tawagan rin yung DFA in as much as may uh, foreign interference na pinag-uusapan. Is there a uh, COMSEC, a DFA representative? I think uh, I see some uh, familiar faces or familiar names at least. Yes, ma'am. Um, Acting Vice Chairman Edgardo O. Castro and Ms. Risa Jamila S. San Juan. Sige, can uh, someone from the DFA please uh, reply, particularly with regard to um, the uh, possible diplomatic and international sanctions on uh, violators? DFA, please. Yes, Comsec. Is there anyone online from the DFA? See Andre Bauson. Is that correct? DFA, nariyan ba kayo? Uh, good morning, ma'am. I'm Andre Bauson. I'm uh, from the Legislative Liaison Office. Uh, I'll try to get in touch with uh, our OVS, our Overseas Voting uh, Secretariat Chair, Mr. E. Castro. Ah, I think he's he's there. Yes, uh, okay. Director Castro, please, if you're online, can uh, you help us here? It's not yet with the absentee voting, but uh, we are still dealing with foreign intervention in terms of uh, um, digital platforms. Wala, wala tayong mahanap. O, sige. Um, uh, hello, hello. Uh, I'm... Ayun. Uh, yes. th thank you, thank you very much, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for the invitation to attend this hearing. I apologize; it took me a while to get in. I'm not too familiar with this platform of okay. Webex. Uh, the, the the Department of Foreign Affairs at this moment does not really have an official position. Uh, it is a rather new issue. That's uh, right. And uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs Overseas uh, Voting Secretariat mainly takes its cue from uh, Comelec. Uh, while at this point, uh, we, we can start studying within the department the uh, uh, foreign uh, aspect, the uh, international law implications, uh, we would like to echo the uh, recommendations of Comelec. Uh, where, where in the uh, departments with more expertise, departments and agencies with more expertise in uh, uh, cybersecurity, uh, join us in a uh, uh, interagency task force to be able to uh, address the uh, uh, issues uh, more thoroughly. I think uh, what Jonathan, uh, Professor Jonathan Ong, as well as the Facebook uh, position indicate is that they need the DFA uh, for certain diplomatic sanctions, perhaps, or some kind of negotiations. It's very, very clear for the first takedown that occurred in March of 2019 uh, by Facebook that um, payments were made in uh, U.S. dollars in Saudi Riyal and that payments were also made in Chinese yuan. So uh, is there anything that the DFA with our representatives in these countries can do? Oh, that is something that we would have to be, uh, to be studying, ma'am. Uh, as uh, as uh, we have not had the chance to uh, consult with our uh, Office of Legal Affairs at the moment, and, uh, and as a result, uh, the DFA does not have a, uh, an official position on this matter yet. Okay, uh, we'd be very grateful if you, had a, if you could have a quick look at it. And if there were any diplomatic um, actions that we could undertake uh, so that we could uh, quickly incorporate that, whether in the bill or in the institution of a task force for this purpose. 
Thank you. And um, with that, I think uh, we've uh, finished the government uh, agencies that are involved in this problem and call on the PPCRV, NAMFRE, Lente, Democracy Watch, CENPEG, AES Watch, and uh, other uh, NGOs concerned with election integrity. Um, if they would like to add anything to the discussion, please, you are invited now. Uh, please turn off your other devices, as I seem to be hearing um, sound from somewhere. Yes, uh, Committee Secretary, does anyone wish to add? Any resource persons for? Yeah, yung ating mga viewers mula suke na mga stakeholders, ang mga NGOs. Um, while we're waiting, perhaps Professor Ong, as uh, final Philip, um, you've sent me a message here um, with some questions for Comelec for uh, uh, spokesman Jimenez. So perhaps you can posit them yourself. I think his concern is uh, to avoid a highly politicized framework and uh, to define the academic research contribution that uh, can be made. Is that correct? So, yeah. Jonathan, please. Sure. Um, uh, thank you so much, Senator. Um, my question to uh, Mr. Emmanuel of, on the ICT um, is the bill seems to have a very narrow um, definition of um, coordinated inauthentic behavior that ascribes this activity to foreign bad actors. However, um, from how you retold your examples, you seem to suggest or define bad actors as local operators. So um, what exactly is the scope um, of the bill? Um, and is there a desire to expand? Um, um, yeah, it's, it's current narrow focus. And then uh, the other question is to Mr. Jimenez of Comelec of how can we help um, in the academic community um, um, to provide a multi-pronged approach to help you at different levels of digital literacy, but also to um, highlight those vulnerabilities of when certain kinds of regulatory measures might also might introduce more harm um, to the electoral process. Thank you. Thanks. We invite uh, Yusek Mani as well as Spokesman Jimenez to respond. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, uh, my our capability to what what we mean to say is that the capability, naman of the ICT Cybersecurity Bureau, assuming there's already a proper uh, law enforcement docket, no, uh, it's a it's an investigation investigative docket. We're able to help determine whether or not posts are actually coordinated in authentic behaviors, CIBs. And then we can also lodge that, nga, that complaint, help lodge that complaint to Facebook's CIB department. At ang tanong mo, if, if we're gonna focus on local, no, sir, we are able to see whether or not it's actually a coordinated attack from a foreign uh, IP address. So, of course, if we see that it is actually coming from a, a foreign source, we can see that it's actually CIB coordinated from a certain rogue state or sponsored state. Then, of course, we'll also all the more raise it to Sina Facebook, which we are already in contact with. I'm in contact with the, C with the uh, Facebook people. Po. Thank you, po, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, are all. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, off the top of my head, I really can't define uh, what sort of entry uh, the academe would like into this problem with the public, but certainly uh, we would need all the help we can get in educating the public, especially on media hygiene and uh, information literacy. The public itself has its own um, literacy campaign. Uh, we sort of call it timeline mo, linis mo. Uh, basically calling on people to purge their own timelines of false or misleading information. Um, 
But again, like I said, I apologize. It's off the top of my head. I really don't see how, uh, or I, I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot give you any sort of uh, idea right now how how we can interface with the academy more fully at this stage. But we are willing to work with you to discover such needs. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think um, the ethnographic research. Um, digitally and undertaken by Professor Ong, uncovering uh, mayoral and other uh, politicians um, resorting to nefarious uh, digital means is already a clear indication that they have a great deal to contribute to this discussion. So, ang sasabihin ko, kasi parati natin sinasabi yung coordinated behavior, eh kapag eleksyon, talagang coordinated yan. Sasabihin ko na yung totoo, ako may hinanakit, ano, dyan sa mga takedown na yan, noong March 2019. Maraming fan pages na mga Marcos loyalist ang nadali dyan. Hindi namin hawak. They're not registered with the Comelec because we have, no, we have absolutely no control over these groups. And at the same time, um, we actually... Uh, uh, were mystified why they were taken down. They were like basic fan pages. But naturally, in the midst of a campaign, their actions were probably what could be called coordinated. So, isa yun. Isa ka, at uh, yung ikalawa, yung laging daing ng ating administrasyon, kung bakit yung fact checker na ginagamit ng Facebook, ay eh, yung dalawang tanyag na media na uh, bumabatikos ke Presidente Duterte sa kada kada kilos, halos, eh, yung Rappler at yung Vera Files, bakit itinatag yan bilang uh, gatekeeper, ika nga? So, I think the uh, politicizing question becomes very, very confused. Um, are there any uh, insights into this problem? Yung tinatawag na fact-checker ng iba't ibang uh, social uh, media platforms. I mean. Madam Chair? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, I think uh, Professor Ong Muna, and then uh, is that Yusek Mani who called? Yes, Pop Man. Ah, sige. Ah, sige. Si, uh, si Professor Ong Lang Muna pa. Sure. Um, just to give um, an insight to other um, challenges um, in the region. So, Facebook um, partners with fact checkers, not just in the Philippines, but in other oh. countries. And there are some cases in which fact checkers have become much more explicit with their political alignment in other countries, such as India, where the fact check industry um, has kind of flourished um, and they're able to kind of um, admit to their political alignment that they they will only fact check politicians of a certain party. So there are those dangers. At the same time, um, we also have to recognize that journalists and fact checkers have um, done incredible work when it comes to fact checking and keeping politicians honest um, with regard to um, COVID, with regard with regard to medical misinformation. So. Um, they have done a lot in terms of um, sure. uh, deepening our understanding around that. Um, at the same time, no, I'm not, I'm not we, saying okay. that I, I'm not saying that we don't need fact checkers. We absolutely require them. Yes. Yeah. For yes. Um, and and we in the academe also say that. Um, we also. Um, and here's where uh, we can also contribute in term um, our ex uh, our expertise in political communication. That sometimes correcting disinformation as narratives rather than just as individual bad actors might be more effective. Dahil paminsan, kung fina fact check mo isang influencer, isang account, you end up popularizing. Parang mas marami pang tao will become curious kung sino sila and that will expand the reach of a very dangerous um, uh, false claim. So to understand, to contextualize um, a false claim as an entire narrative is more strategic. And when it comes to um, the electoral process, nakita natin ito sa US, parang narratives around um, the electoral process itself, whether we can trust the process um, and the outcome of the process. That is something that um, Comelec should be um, paying attention to. 
parang disinformation that undermines the process of elections and the integrity of your organization and your independence. And that's something that, again, academics, journalists, and multi-stakeholder approach could help um, uh, strengthen and provide support to you. Yes, I think the whole uh, simplistic system of fact-checking as it as it operates today is inadequate. And uh, a multi-stakeholder approach, um, dimensionally involving academics, traditional media, and uh, stakeholders would probably be better rounded and uh, more comprehensive. So, Yusek Mani lang, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give some examples as well, so para mas maging malinaw yung gagawin, uh, yung ating description. So, yung unang question nyo ma'am, yung posibli bang, an ang nangyayari ngayon, posibleng nagkaka-takedown sa certain campaign websites as we're moving towards the 2022 elections and we yes. magsasuffer yes. ng certain, uh, parang a, a bit of injustice, mapifeel mo na para may certain injustice yung campaign site mo, campaign page mo, pwedeng matakedown. Explain ko lang a bit how the Facebook CIP works, sa pagkaintindi ko. So, posibleng tama naman ang pahina mo, ang page mo, that's a legit page. Pero pag napapansin po kasi may con a co coordinated inauthentic behavior, meaning to say, marami naming mga fake accounts. Hindi nyo kagagawan yon may mga mga fake accounts na nagla-like, like, like, or nagpo-post, post, post, doon sa legit page mo, pwede kayong ma matake down. Hindi dahil sadya mo yon pero kung hindi, baka, baka may nag-like lang ng whatever. So, ang gagawin po ng DICT ngayon, ma'am, uh, in accordance with it were, uh, uh, for, the, for the next few months is we're also helping government agencies and it's also open to others and education on how to properly manage the pages based on the new in extensive guidelines of Facebook's inauthentic behavior. Wala tayong magagawa dahil yun yung kanilang patakaran. So, ang atin is para matulungan ang mga, mga government agencies and even individuals maintaining their pages na hindi basta-basta ma mas-CIB ng Facebook. Ituturoan natin, ha, paano ba ngayon umagana? Paano mo na ba dapat minamanage ang pahina mo? Wala, ah, wala, wala akong ma... Wala. So, Yusek Mani, anong maipapayo mo sa ating mga AFP at PNP na tinake na noong September? Ay po, ang ano sila magbabago na hindi sila uh, tatawaging uh, coordinated inauthentic behavior? Ay, hindi po nila po yung kasalanan, ma'am. Possibly pong um, ang, 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 ang tutulong po namin ngayon sa AFP at PNP ang lahat ng yun is tuloy-tuloy po ang ating education based on these new guidelines. So, kumbaga, we have to start working within the Ante, rules ko, of wala this. Bang karapatan, wala bang karapatan ng AFP at PNP gamitin ang social media uh, sa kampanya laban sa uh, CPP NPA, halimbawa? Uh, meron po, ma'am. Meron po, ma'am. All the more po na dapat, ma'am. We have to do, we do that, ma'am. We are in full support so, of ano that yung violation na Ano yung violation nila? Bakit sila na-take down? Sa pakiwari ninyo, tama ba yung ginawa ni ng Facebook? Ay, hindi po ako privy doon sa particular violations na yun, ma'am. Ang akin Ito po, ma'am, is yung moving sila, forward. Sila, diba? Kasi nga, Apo, yung behavior, noong September, Apo, tapos si siyempre, Todo Alma, at uh, ang gobyerno, galit na galit, kung bakit, Bawal sa kanila gumamit ng Facebook samantalang ang uh, lahat ng uh, sinasabing uh, leftist, insurrection, ewan ko ba lahat ng rebelde, eh, talagang kalat na kalat, talamak ang kanilang recruitment sa Facebook pages. Ano mo sasabi ninyo? I don't know. Professor Ong, uh, can you weigh in on this? So, oh, um, and this is a frustration of academics, and I'm sure, yeah, um, it sounds like um, government officials are um, equally frustrated that Facebook needs to be sharing their data, needs to be showing their methodologies um, when it comes to um, these takedowns, in also as a way to kind of neutralize um, accusations that they're um, um, being partisan. So. Um, nagkaroon nga ng, um, ng, uh, ng takedown and ang tanong namin as academics when they did that was bakit ngayon lang um, and ano yung, yung timing nila was this, was this happened before the US elections and over a year after 
um, itong mga accounts na to supposedly um, nag-influence ng um, discussions nung 2019 elections natin. So, those kinds of questions, uh, wala, wala tayong transparency around that. And that's why nagkakaroon nga ng tech clash na parang um, nasaan ba yung accountability and responsibility ng Facebook. And that's why, again, the multi-stakeholder approach is necessary here. Um, multiple sets of eyes um, in order to look at the same set of data, in order for, uh, for us to establish those checks and balances. Um, yes. yes, I think uh, there's always been uh, this uh, um, exaggerated linkage between fake news and national security. Uh, medyo parati yan ng dahilan sa magkabila at uh, siguro isa pang uh, kinakailangan liwanagin ng ating mga academics at pag-aaralan ng maigi. Uh, there have also been professors who have indicated that there's a real threat of a China candidate or even two Manchurian candidates. So, ito yung kinatatakutan natin. Perhaps it's high time that we do, in fact, uh, come up with a bill explicitly defining foreign interference as indicated in our constitution, as indicated as well in our election laws, and uh, providing more powers to a new task force. Hindi naman ito department na saksakan ng laki, pero siguro maliit lang na pagtitipon-tipon dahil bagong-bago pa itong area na ito at uh, kinakailangan na liwanagin. Uh, nang unti-unti, syempre very conservative. I uh, agree with uh, Professor Ong as well as with the Comelec that we study this thoroughly and move very, very uh, judiciously and prudently. So thank you. If there are no additions to uh, these queries or to this debate, we shall move on to the 2022 election resolution of Senator Angara. Uh, to those who uh, um, need not participate in the discussion regarding 2022 uh, new normal elections, um, may I allow Professor Ong, Facebook Philippines, and the other stakeholders only invited for Senator Recto's resolution to uh, leave the room. We will invite you and uh, for a further TWG and in all likelihood, um, there will be uh, many questions still to be raised. Thank you very much for your participation. Maraming salamat po. Okay. So, lilipat naman tayo, Comsec, sa bagong, um, bagong resolution mula kay Senator Angara. At uh, siguro ang unang masasabi, maliwanag kay Presidente Duterte, tuloy na tuloy ang 2022. Sa so, mga umaasa na postpone ito o makakansela, eh, sorry na lang, tuloy na tuloy na po. So, uh, having said that, I think it's important that um, we call on uh, the COMELEC and uh, the others involved to um, discuss um, the possibilities, the different scenarios that have been posited for this elections. Di ba men, new normal kayo na committee that's already studying this? Uh, spokesperson Jimenez, please. Uh, yes, uh, Senator, we do have a new normal committee. It's being headed by uh, Commissioner Richie Ko. And mm -hmm. uh, ang, ang pinaka-flagship activity namin ngayon is uh, this mapping project that we're having in, in Palawan. We call it informally a mapping project because we're basically mapping out how we're going to um, carry out elections under pandemic conditions. So um, it's, a, it's a mapping experience where we'll find out if the methods that we are deploying will be effective and actually efficient uh, as a means to control uh, the transmission during election, on election day and thereafter. Um, yung so, yung uh, mapping ba, yung mapping ba ng new normal committee ninyo, does that have to do with uh, the different modes that you will undertake, the different uh, techniques, or uh, is this mapping... Uh, simply with regard to uh, the automated election? No, ma'am. Uh, this is with regard to the entire electoral process from the very start all the way up to the very end. No? Um, ang hindi lang po kasama dito sa mapping na to ay yung, uh, yung mga legislative solutions na syempre wala naman kaming 
control dyan, ano, kung matutuloy man yeah. yun. So, ang, ang sa amin po, uh, yung mga procedures at practices na ginagawa ng COMELEC uh, sa elections. Again, the Palawan Plebiscite is manual. So, a lot of the procedures that we are trying out are also based or can scale to manual elections. I've heard uh, and I've been asked so many different options. Ano? So, paramount sa atin lahat is uh, the uh, increased cost, time, and personnel required to uh, meet the uh, standards for COVID um, protocols. Uh, magiging uh, malaking sagabal ba to? Kasi as we know, dapat may, may uh, face mask, may shield. Many people have recommended testing. Tapos uh, changing the venues dahil dapat malaki. Ideally, outdoors. Paano kaya yun? Yes, ma'am. Uh, these are very real concerns. And in fact, makikita natin to na in operation sa Palawan. Uh, let's just talk about first yung, yung, uh, yung safety precautions natin. Uh, yes. Ito sa paghahanda namin sa, ano, sa Palawan plebiscite, we're already expanding our timetable to include early arrival at the, at, at in Palawan so that we can take into consideration yung quarantine requirements ng, ng Palawan. So, so, anong oras mag-uumpisa yung expanded timetable? Mas maaga kayo ganon? Ma'am, nagsisi... Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we're already mobilizing now um, for a plebiscite that's happening in March pa. No? Kaya nga, pero uh, for example, just run me through the schedule of election day. Yes, ma'am. Anong okay. oras kayo magbubukas? Or okay. i-expand ba yan sa two or three days? Ma'am, hindi po. Yung, yung mismong election day starts at 7 in the morning. And uh, we will hold elections until 3 in the afternoon. No? Uh, ang, ang adjustment natin sa Palawan is specifically to increase the number of polling places and correspondingly lower the number of voters per polling place. So that kung dati... Uh, so it's, not actually an ex it's actually not an expanded timetable. Halos pareho pa rin. Yun nga lang, mas maraming polling place at saka babawasan yung botante kada polling area. Yes, ma'am. I apologize. Yung expanded timetable uh, meant yung preparations namin. Ay, yung preparations. Year. Opo. Dan -dan okay. Opo. So, nagsimula kami, magsisimula po kami ng itong February uh, so that by middle of February, a lot of our resources and, and personnel will be already on-site. No? Kasi nga, kailangan natin i-accommodate yung 14-day na quarantine uh, requirements. We'll also be including in our supplies, the procurement, yung mga personal protective equipment, including face masks and face shields, rubber gloves. So clearly, and, clearly this, is not the, this is not the skill set of uh, COMELEC. So you have to call on the DOH and the uh, municipal health workers and so on. Nagko-coordinate po kami sa local uh, health uh, authorities and itong uh, buong proseso ng Palawan Plebisit was also uh, planned out in coordination with the Department of Health and IATF. And we will follow the same model for the 2022 elections. Anong, anong naiisip mo para sa 2022, uh, in as much as may instructions tayo na ituloy yan ni Presidente Duterte, um, what, uh, what do you have in mind? Because... Uh, there have been so many uh, modalities mooted, causing alarm in certain sectors. So, yung isa, yung extended, ano, yung two to three days, at saka combined with early voting, which I think is entirely reasonable naman, dahil sa ating mga elderly, yung uh, ating PWD, yung mga ibang sundalo at police that will be on duty on that day. Uh, what are your thoughts? Can we actually conduct a two to three day national election or mas lalo magkakagulo tuwing gabi? Ma'am, medyo leery kami, medyo worry kami sa two to three days of election. Uh, the COMELEC is actually tending towards longer election hours. Nakikita po natin sa ibang bansa, no? especially uh, yung, yung mga malalaking elections, they do have elections that last for up to 12 hours. And uh, so... Yung, yung, yung tendency po ng COMELEC right now, the predisposition of COMELEC right now 
is to go towards longer election hours and perhaps smaller precinct sizes. Uh, so, uh, but as far as the two to three days of elections, uh, as you pointed out, there's been a lot of concern about that. There's a lot of worry about what happens uh, at night, I suppose. <laughs> so uh, overall, po, ang, ang, ang takbo ng pag-iisip ng COMELEC ngayon is towards longer election days, uh, possibly an extension oh. at the end of the day. Kung oh, mag precinct kayo, ibig sabihin you limit the precincts talaga, yung totohanan ng 500 voters kada. Hindi na lolobo sa Quezon City ng mga 8-900 kahit pilitin natin maging 500. Yes ma'am, malamang ganun po ang mangyayari. No? Uh, but that will also, again, have an impact on, on the physical preparations naman. Because kakailanganin natin ng mas malaking mga espasyo at mas malalaking lugar. Kaya nga, kasi sa... dadami yan. Yes po ma'am. And syempre, dadami rin ang ating personal so requirements. You, you need more princess. Yeah, you have eskwelahan, indoors yan, marami sa kanila, wala namang cross-ventilation, so baka maghanap tayo ng stadium. I think a combination of longer hours perhaps and early voting. Sino ang uh, papayagan natin mag-early voting? Maganda po yung early voting and right now the, the thinking is, is uh, to give vulnerable sectors uh, particular priority jan sa early voting. You know, we're talking about senior citizens and perhaps persons with disabilities. Um, so the smaller, smaller populations of, of those particular subgroups will make it very uh, easy, uh, relatively easy to, to conduct early voting for them. Right now, po kasi yung early voting natin, of course, alam niyo naman, limited to government officials and media. May recommendation rin na yung ibang early voting pwede nang mail-in o pwede na rin daw uh, ibang means. Anong tingin mo? Kasi lahat kinakabahan sa ganyan. Ma'am, yung mail voting kasi uh, while we're willing to explore that possibility, the fact is uh, for mail voting to work, we need really uh, the postal service. Not so much. Yes. No? Comelec will, will, uh, will take charge of, of the mail once it has been received by us. Pero yung process of getting it to us is, is something out of our control. So, uh, mas marami under this so called mapping Under this so-called mapping project, are you able to identify or are you open to identifying together with Phil Post uh, that is undertaking um, a very expensive computerization effort? Are you willing to identify some pilot precincts? Para lang masubukan yung mail-in, para masubukan yung ibang uh, mga modes na rin na-recommend. Ma'am, willing po ang COMELEC makipag-ugnayan sa field post. Pero ma'am, just to manage expectations, malabo na pong magawa natin yan for the Palawan plebiscite. Kasi sa March na po yan. Ano? But, uh, Hindi, for 2022 naman itong hearing na to. Uh, oh, yes. For 2022, halimbawa, yung mail-in voting sa ibang lugar, Tapos si beef up ng field post yung kanilang capacity kasi bago pa lang yung computerization. Parang experiment lang, I don't know. Or experiment sa early voting, di ko alam, para sa seniors. Kasi maraming alma dun sa ating PWD lalo. Yes ma'am. Ma'am, subject syempre to the confirmation of, of uh, our bank. Uh, mukha namang wala namang kami magiging uh, objections to uh, studying this matter with field post. No? Uh, and okay. so, kasi... Uh, apa, Pinagmamalaki nila, makocomputer, matatapos na daw yung computerization nila. Eh sabi ko, magpakitang gilas kayo, mag-identify kayo kung saan at uh, kung anong eleksyon ang uh, pwede natin pasukan kung uh, sa early voting o kung saan. Actually, we're already doing mail-in voting, di ba, sa absentee. Uh, so perhaps we can call on our overseas voting group from DFA as well kung meron silang masasabi or uh, yung iba pang representatives na narito pa rin. Kanina si Mr. Castro galing DFA, overseas voting yata yung pinag-usapan. Yes, Mr. Castro, please. Ed, you're muted. Uh, 
Yes, uh, Mr. Castro, our concern here in the Senate is despite many, many efforts to um, finance properly and uh, adequately the overseas voting effort, we continue to have very, very low turnouts. Is uh, there anything that we can do between the COMELEC and the DFA and the other groups? Uh, wala ka pong audio. Uh, Mr. Castro, paki-on lang ng audio, hindi ka naririnig. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Okay, our concern is the exceedingly low turnout, uh, given uh, the finance, the effort, the uh, personnel involved. Wala na naman. Namute ka na naman. Ah, sorry. Um, the FA, please. Yung audio lang. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me now, please? Yes. There we go. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, in in proportion to the increase in registration that we have experienced in the past elections, uh, definitely the uh, voter turnout has been lagging, although the voter turnout has also increased in comparison to uh, all the previous elections uh, since the beginning of overseas voting. Uh, we are currently supporting an exploration uh, study of uh, Comelec right now to uh, ha include uh, new technologies for uh, overseas voting. And uh, hopefully this uh, exploration will turn out successful and it would be acceptable also for the legislature to uh, allow for the use of perhaps uh, internet voting. Nako, uh, maraming nagpapanik sa mga uh, pahiwatig na ganyan. But uh, I know that Commissioner Guanzon for one uh, has been proposing that and uh, conducted some meetings, in fact, with the OFWs who are very much in favor of that. But of course, our cybersecurity concerns continue to uh, dominate. Uh, anong tingin niyo? How real is that? Or are we willing, actually, like... Uh, with regard to mail-in voting domestically, are are we willing or able to uh, conduct overseas online voting in certain pilot areas, or is it still too risky? Uh, Bab, uh, we we are planning in collaboration with Comelec to have a test mock voting uh, sometime end of this month, early February. And uh, depending ah. on the results of, of that experiment, we would be in a better position to assess the uh, existing technologies. Where did, uh, you, where did you hope to undertake online voting? Saan yan? Which uh, territory? Uh, Ma'am, we're planning to do it for all our posts since it's just mock, a mock election. I see. Uh, at the end uh, of the and uh, who, I think... All internationally? Think is, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's the only aren't way you, to test the, aren't, the technology. Aren't you, dooming, aren't you dooming yourself to failure? Hindi ba mas maigi i-pilot muna sa mga tried and tested na matindi ang digital uh, uh, infrastructure? Uh, Ma, that would also be our way of assessing on re realistically on where the technology would work. So, uh, uh, so we yes. will try it in all regions. All regions at the same time within the month. Uh, yes, very ambitious. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, is uh, the uh, Comelec um, participating in this mock election online? Uh, they are actually they are actually taking the lead, ma'am. Uh, last month they were a the the uh, four uh, potential suppliers for the technology. Uh, briefed the Comelec and then briefed a bigger group, which included the DFA. And uh, now I believe that the Office of Overseas Voting of Comelec is currently working with those suppliers to be able to uh, schedule the mock elections. Yes, any word from uh, Comelec uh, with regard to this mock election? Um, of course, there are uh, very... Uh, very broad concerns about the security involved. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
but the uh, the mock elections for online voting right now is is really limited in application to overseas voting. Only. Um, and there have been uh, previous mock elections using online voting, and then uh, we see that there are a lot of security measures in place, and which can be put in place uh, by these different suppliers. Kaya nga po, susubukan muna natin. Um, but again, just to manage expectations, we still have to have authority from Congress to actually deploy an online voting uh, system. Right now, the authority of the COMELEC is limited to testing out alternative means of voting. So this is one of those alternative means that we're testing. I see. So you're only allowed to test. Yes, right now. Yes, Kaya ma'am. Kaya kung election lang ang ginagawa ng DFA at atin na rin ang COMELEC kasi wala pa sa batas. Ganun ba yun? Wala pa sa batas, yes ma'am. Okay. I think the, the concerns uh, arose again after the Iowa primaries in the uh, last presidential elections where napakaliit lang ng uh, numero ng botante at eh, Tatot kalahating araw bago naglabasan yung uh, resulta, no? So it happens in uh, the most high-tech jurisdictions such as the U.S. And these mobile voting apps are not infallible, clearly. Yes, ma'am. So um, um, I think there is also an effort. We've talked about uh, the lack of Comelec personnel. There's also been an effort to deputize enforcement agencies and LGUs and uh, so on to deputize even our uh, uh, NAMFREL, PPCRB, and the other election watchdogs to um, help us in the uh, effort of 2022. Um, are you still considering that at COMELEC, yung mag deputize ng mga PNP, AFP? and uh, others. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pangkaraniwan po na nag-deputize tayo ng iba't ibang mga uh, ahensya or entities, no? As far as the as far as the private uh, entities are concerned, for instance, NAMFRED and CRV, what they do is they seek accreditation as citizens' arms and yes. for specific portfolios. And yes, ma'am, itutuloy po natin yung kanyang procedure. Pero walang pagbabago dyan? Walang pagbabago sa deputizing? Kasi, syempre, mas matagal to. You'll need so many batches, 12 hours. Hirap na hirap na yung mga teacher dyan at yung mga komelek, eh, bagsak na siguro sa trabaho. Uh, Ma'am, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng, uh, ng pag-uusap, syempre, sa Department of Education for our uh, for our requirements, no? particularly sa pagpapatakbo ng ating mga electoral boards. But we do have uh, a law regarding uh, service on election day for teachers. Pero po yung uh, ating mga private partners like halimbawa, DepEd, I'm sorry, NAMFREL and BPCRV, uh, sa ibang aspeto po sila ng election management mga pasok. For instance, BPCRV, uh, they normally deploy assistance desks. So that's probably what they're going to be uh, proposing to do for 2022 as well. Namfrel is more on the technical side, uh, particularly sa random manual audit to magkakaroon ng automated elections. Yes, I think there were also proposals. Uh, if there was going to be live streaming and additional security features that they would be involved. Uh, yes, upon yes. formal accreditation, of course. Um, yes. I'd like to call on Senator uh, Francis Tolentino, who appears to have a question. Francis? Senator Tolentino, please. Pwedeng laksan konti, uh, Senator Tolentino, medyo mahina. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can Ayan, hear me? perfect. DJ na DJ ang dating mo, ha? Oh, well, uh, Okay na, okay na. Uh, ay, nawala na naman ang audio ni Senator Tolentino. Uh, Can, you hear, Can you hear me now? Ayun, ayun, okay. So, just one interjection. Siguro at this yes, early please. stage, uh, Comelec should look into the plight of our seafarers. If my 
uh, records uh, and recollection would, would uh, prove me right, I think we supply a third or a fourth or more than a fourth of seafarers around the world. And the seafarers cannot vote. Correct. Yeah. They cannot vote because uh, while, while they are at sea, they're being required to go to the nearest consular post or station. Uh, how can you do that? So uh, th this, this would require technology. This, re this would require a lot of uh, innovation on the part of Comelec. How to do this? I, I really don't know. So ang, ang laki po nawawalan boto at sila po yung gustong bumoto. Oh, oh. Ang, ang duty nila, six months, six months. Yung uh, Siemens book, yung contract nila. So how do we address this problem? And we're not, we're not uh, looking at all consular posts. Konti lang po to. You're looking at Rotterdam. You're looking at the big ports of Berlin and perhaps New York or perhaps uh, Los Angeles. Konti lang po to. Uh, can, 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 can Comelec uh, devise a method on how, to, uh, how, how, how we should allow uh, the seafarers to exercise their right, their right of suffrage? Yun lang po, Madam Chair, and thank you for allowing yes. me to test my microphone. <laughs> bagets na bagets tayo, ah. hindi na headphone. Ah. Okay, uh, oo, mara, matinding tanong yan, matagal ng problema. Kasi magagaling pa naman magpadala ng pera, involved na involved pa naman sa mga social media platforms, yung mga siman. Pero ang ending, hindi makaboto. Ano kaya ang magagawa natin para tulungan sila? Um, Madam uh, Senator, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, right now, meron po tayong tinatawag natin vote anywhere para sa mga seaman, ano? <clears throat> Which means, uh, wherever, whatever port they make, um, <coughs> whatever port they're in, they can actually go to the consular office or embassy there and actually vote. Ang problema po, katulad na sinabi nga ni Senator Francis, eh hindi naman sila palaging naka, naka dock. So, what happens if, if uh, they don't dock during the 30-day uh, voting period. So, um, ang, ang, ano po, ang tinitignan po na common at dito, ito nga yung ating online voting is one way of, of uh, meeting that need. Uh, they have shipboard internet. So, if uh, we have an online voting system using uh, internet technology, then possibly pong makaboto yung mga seafarers natin habang sila ay naglalayag. Ang problema po natin ngayon, since wala tayo niyan, limitado tayo sa abilities natin and what we do is as an accommodation to seafarers is that we allow them to vote anywhere. So as long as they're making port of call, uh, there's an embassy or a consulate there, then they can vote there. Eh, hindi pa ba nga pwede in addition to um, vote anywhere, pwede bang habaan yung 30 days para lang sa seafarers Kasi takot pa tayo sa online, wala pa tayong in-place na security features. Is it uh, possible to uh, extend the voting period para lang sa kanila? Dahil yun nga, nakalaot sila ng anin na buwan, eh papano naman natin sisiguraduin na makaka-furlow yung mga yan? Senator Tolentino, please. Yes, uh, just one last point, Madam Chair. Uh, perhaps the COMELEC, and I'm giving them some... Uh, uh, Headways should should look should take into consideration if it is a a flag a Philippine flag vessel uh, which is considered part of Philippine soil and they should be allowed to vote anywhere because that's part of Philippine territory or perhaps deputizing the ship captain if the ship captain is a Filipino uh, our existing laws would even show and uh, the the former Senate President Pimentel can prove me right, that even ship captains are allowed to allowed to uh, Mar conduct marriage, uh, marriage, et cetera, et cetera. So th there, are, there are considerations given to, to a ship captain. But a Filipino vessel is part of Philippine territory. And for sure, the uh, a, 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 a methodology can be devised that would allow them to vote within Philippine territory. Uh, I suppose, uh, Madam Chair. Salamat po. 
Yes, I agree, uh, Senator Tarantino. We need to be very creative about this because we are uh, basically depriving our hardworking seafarers uh, of their fundamental right to vote. Um, any random thoughts from DFA and Comelec? I will not hold you to this. Obviously, uh, this is more brainstorming than uh, position and policy laying. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Castro, please. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, I think the the uh, the issue, the challenges with the uh, seafarers are twofold. Uh, one, they don't really know when they're going to be on board and when they're going to be back in the Philippines. And once you register as an overseas voter uh, and the registration period ends, it's no long we they will no longer be able to transfer their registration back to local here in the Philippines. Akala, they ko sabi not, ng, akala ko sabi ng COMELEC na vote anywhere. Uh, vote anywhere abroad po. But that precludes them from vote, voting locally because they will already be registered as an overseas voter. So e bakit dapat COMELEC, uh, kung pwede silang vote anywhere abroad, mas lalong dapat vote ta in the Philippines pwede, di ba? So this, has, this situation has discouraged seafarers from registering as uh, overseas voters. Uh, the, the current rate of registration we have, uh, they are a very small percentage of the registered voters. It's about uh, less than 2% now for overseas voting. I see. What was the other Precisely problem? Precisely so because they are this, the, this issue that they don't know whether they're going to be in the Philippines, Philippines. or overseas. I see. And I so see. they would rather keep the option of being able to vote here if they are here. Oh, siguro kung seafarer, uh, pwede nang gawa ng paraan ng COMELEC yan na kung hindi nila alam kung kailan sila lalayag, eh, pwede naman kung vote anywhere, more so sa Pilipinas. Pwede ba yun sa COMELEC? Uh, Pag-usapan na lang, ano? Pag-usapan na lang siguro, uh, Senator. Pero kasi right now, ang pag nasa Pilipinas ka, if you're voting domestically, then geographic po yan. So kailangan ka naka-assign sa isang uh, polling place. Uh, nagiging vote anywhere lamang yan kapag sila ay overseas or nasa barco. I see. So it's geographically limited kapag nandito. Pero parang parang mali. Pag nasa abroad, mas maluwag. Pag nasa sariling bansa, hindi ka papayagan. Parang baliktad naman yata yung mundo. Chair, Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Pimentel, please. Pa paano kung isali natin sila, James, sa uh, system ng local absentee voting? Parang gano'n. Yes. Na, Tama. Na pwede sila... Kasi anyway, yung vote anywhere nila abroad, limited din naman yun sa... Party list, senators, vice president, and president, the same as uh, local absentee voting. So, pag-aralan pag nyo nga kung, kasi di ba, ang local absentee voting, in-expand natin for the media eh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So, siguro, a little amendment to the law, we can also include them. Uh, pero, choice, choice nila, but there must be a system na to detect that they have already voted, di ba? So that they can only vote, vote once. Yes, yes. Tama. Yes, I think uh, all these uh, creative ideas uh, are really urgently necessary so that we can finally capture the seafarers' vote. Uh, Mr. Castro, you said there was another problem in addition to the fact na hindi nila alam kung kailan sila lalayag. Yeah, and, and then the, the second one, ma'am, is that uh, the, the reason is that uh, there's very low registration on the part of seafarers as overseas voters. Because they because they're they're discouraged by the fact that they since they don't know when they will be during election time. I see. Therefore, they they keep their options open for being able to vote here, and as a result, they don't register as overseas voter. I see. I see. Yes, uh, that's correct. So, uh, isa pa, maraming returning OFW. Dinereklamo nila baka hindi na sila qualified to vote sa 2022. Eh daan-daan libo yan eh na napauwi dahil sa COVID. Pa paano natin i-register yung nauwi? Kawawa naman. Nawala na ng trabaho, nawala pa ng boto. Ma James, ano kaya? Meron tayong special program para sa mga repatriated OFWs. 
Ma'am, um, like, like uh, Mr. Castro pointed out, no? uh, isa sa pinakamalaking issue dyan, eh, yung mga voters mismo ayaw magparehistro sa local. Kasi hindi nila alam kung kailan sila makakabalik overseas. And a lot of a lot of the times, and and in our radio program, yung Radio Comelec, we, we deal with this often. Uh, tinatanong ng mga tao kung kailan ba sila magpaparehistro sa local kung hindi sila sure kung sila ay makakabalik pa wherever saan sila na-deploy. No? And, and the answer is always the same. Uh, we have until August of this year to file your transfer kung talagang desidido na kayo magpa-rehistro sa Pilipinas. Um, otherwise, uh, it's their option to, to stay uh, registered sa overseas voting system uh, in which case, kung OVS sila but they're not abroad on election day, hindi sila makakaboto dito sa Pilipinas. Nako, kailangan natin ng uh, massive information campaign kasi marami sa kanila hindi alam na pwede pa pala magrehistro until August. And perhaps we can consider also for repatriated uh, OFWs to uh, apply the same seafarers vote anywhere rule. Kung saan man sila ma-deploy kasi hindi pa nga nila alam, pwede rin sila bumoto ron. Pwede okay. kaya yun? Kasi okay. returning okay. 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 sa OVS, sa aming overseas voting committee. Siguro pwede na rin sila vote anywhere kasi hindi naman sila sigurado kung saan madideploy pa. Um, sasangguni ko po yan sa aming overseas voting office. Sige, thank you very much. Uh, any further questions or uh, insights into uh, this effort? Yung ating mga stakeholders, kung meron kayong uh, maidadagdag sa ating new normal na papalo sa 2022. Is that Mr. Del Rosario, please? Are you, uh, are you raising no. your hand po? Yes. Yes po. Um, are you speaking? Kasi yung audio po nila hindi na naririnig. Hello, hello, hello. Ayun, ayun. Naririnig ko kayo. Thank you. I'm Ernie Del Rosario. Yes, Can you po. hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you. Uh, I'm the former IT director of uh, Combelec. Yes. So I retired in 2009. I was the project director of the internet voting in 2007 which was very successful. Yes, you, you, uh, yes, you come before this committee before. We know you, Pa. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, accommodating me. Yeah, I, I just want to tell a story, short story of uh, the Singapore pilot back in September 2007. So uh, there were many voters, OFW, who voted from many countries. There was zero hacking zero totally so many nations or so many people uh, hackers coming from several nations pero walang naging uh, nakalusot so our fear of this uh, cyber security although we still uh, recommended strengthening our cyber security the network on because we have uh, a small glitch a short one but success it was successful in terms of uh, satisfaction of the voters all the components of satisfaction were uh, rated uh, more than 90% rating. So, sayang, we already, uh, we don't need a pilot anymore. We did that in Singapore in 2007. So, the that, was, that, 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 was, that was online, you're saying, Pa? Yes, uh, was that yes. online? Was it mail-in? It was online, totally online. I see. So the other thing that we wanted to add is the online registration using voice biometrics, which Germany, German, Germany police is using successfully, voice biometrics. I see. So the OW, the OW vote, uh, uh, voters will no longer have to go to the, to the uh, embassy to register. We are removing that. Because that's one of the problems. If people are working, the OFW are working. First. And this is Mabala. So, putting online uh, registration, online voting. I see, I see. Thank you very much. Um, maybe, James, uh, can you react to that? 
Presumably, uh, technology is much, much better that now than it was in 2007, and we were able to do it now in 2007. Yeah. Yes, yes, Senator. Um, unfortunately, Thomas, I, well, I agree. Uh, Tama po si Director Del Rosario. Uh, we, were, we were both present alone in the test line. And yes, it was very successful. Unfortunately, hindi po siya na follow up with an enabling law. So, ah. pilot test tayo, pero hindi naging uh, batas yung uh, authorizations sa OMELEC na magpa-online voting. Kaya po, inuulit natin yung proseso essentially ngayon. No? I see. Opo. So, kaya na tayo nagpa-pilot ulit. Although, tama nga, mayroong, uh, may, mayroon na tayong pilot na, na kumbaga, experience. Uh, we feel that perhaps now uh, that would just add to the to the weight of authority that says that uh, online voting is uh, is doable and and safe as for voice yeah. biometrics i have to admit um, there might be issues with building up the database of voice meron po tayong database ng fingerprints etc fingerprinting uh -oh. oh pero iba yung voice po kasi okay pero um ang uh, ang sa ganun it's not for lack of technology, perhaps uh, to assuage the fears of uh, those who are opposing uh, online and mail-in. Baka pwede natin i-explore muna yung online registration. Kahit hindi muna boto, yung registration man lang unahin na, no? Kasi ni hindi nga makapasok sa listahan, ni. Eh. Ma'am, I think meron pong uh, pending online registration na uh, batas. Yes, I think there are several bills. Yes po. So, sana po matuloy po. Okay, thank you. So, okay ang COMELEC to uh, work with that. Yes, Not please. necessarily with the technology of voice biometrics, but uh, with some uh, other uh, forms, perhaps. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, Senator Villar is here, Senator Pimentel. If there are no further queries, um, we can end this discussion and derived perhaps from our resource persons the official updated report ng new normal uh, so far ng ating uh, COMELEC. I see Eric Alvia. Did you want to add something, Eric, please? Uh, I'm sorry. Hirap ako. Hirap ako sa audio mo. Ayan, si Senator Coco Rian at si Senator Francis. Uh, can you try your audio again? Medyo basag yung yung bosses mo, Eric. I'm not able to understand it. Okay. Uh, if you if you if you could, uh, please uh, please type in na lang in the chat box or send you send us your query. Um, I also have in the chat box. Uh, a uh, notice from Lente. May comment ata kayo. Maybe we invite Lente muna until Eric resolves his audio. Sinong representative na ng Lente? Hi, good morning, Madam okay. Chair. Yes. Good morning, everyone. So, hi, I'm Attorney Helen Grido from the Legal Network for Truthful Elections. So, our group, um, given... Um, the importance that we place on the value of conducting periodic elections. At the start of the pandemic, we've um, we've been very vigilant in observing um, the elections that have been conducted in other jurisdictions. Because we think namin like how how will they actually proceed with elections given the challenges of the COVID nineteen um, transmission and the risks. So um, as early as April, uh, we've started consultations with um, public health experts. Uh, with election law experts and even technology um, experts kasi tinitingnan namin yung mga ways or yung mga innovative ways which we can use, which we can implement in our um, in our electoral process. And from those consultations, we were able to um, to come up with a framework uh, for the upcoming elections, um, particularly for the 2022 national and local elections. So we call it the safe at the safe democratic electoral process. So the steps here would involve first a risk assessment uh, based on the trends in the past electoral exercises. 
which would first identify yung mga activities within the within the electoral cycle that would raise the risk of transmission so titingnan natin kung sa anong parte ng registration anong part ng um canvassing or ng counting and even part ng campaign yung um yung very high risk as to uh, for example for crowd for crowd magnets uh for uh, for those that would entail a lot of face-to-face -face interactions and second uh, the risk assessment should include um identifying um activities that would be impacted by the requirements of quarantine like for example um if you are currently if you are positive for covid 19 on the day of election how will you not be disenfranchised by the fact that you need to be quarantined somewhere else and not being able to go to your respective polling place uh, the risk assessment should also include um identification of uh, points uh, which are very high risk for disenfranchisement because um, when we were consulting with the experts with public health with election law and technology experts um na na identify na na yes um like nasabi ni director james of course we will be implementing the face mask face shield um a uh, requirement pero tinitingnan din natin siya as an economical hindrance or an economical or a property requirement for example mm -hmm. sa ating... Ay, kasi yun eh kasi hanggang ngayon mm -hmm. tama ka at hindi na raise mm -hmm. kanina hanggang 14 days pa rin ang papasok at papalabas ng ibang yes. probinsya Kung nasa Metro Manila ka, estudyante ka, paano ka boboto? Mm -hmm. Ang hirap kaya nun, uuwi ka pa, tapos uh, bab magbabayad ka pa, pupunta ka pa dun sa kung saan. Iba-iba kasi yung mga quarantine requirements ng probinsya, you're right, they're not even uniform. Yes. Actually, Senator, um, Madam Chair, uh, we also identified the the, death, the the requirements of the face mask, the face shield can be property requirements that could uh, disenfranchise some vulnerable groups of voters. Even the tests that are required before you enter into the provinces that you where you should be voting. So we need to uh, we need to identify those points eh, for that are at the risk of disenfranchising certain groups of voters. Parang, parang halos lahat ng probinsya magsisimuwian <laughs> yan. Paano ba yun? Lahat ng estudyante natin di makakaboto. 14 days. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yun nga eh. And also, so, they have to pay for the test. Yung mga, mas mura na ngayon yung antigen, pero may ibang probinsya, very strict, ano, nagre-require ng PCR. Yes po. And yung right now, the prices of PCR, RT-PCR is around 3500 up to 5500 So, it's really um it's really burdensome for for some uh, sectors of uh, the voting population. Another would be... Think, uh, uh, for our, mm -hmm. for us, in our case, for example, going to Ilocos, the buses are not yet in operation, uh, yes. as you well know. So even if you are uh, keen to go home, you can't, and you have the money, you don't have uh, a bus. Yes, true. And also, um, there's also a push for, um, of course, we are encouraging um, to limit face-to-face -face interactions, for example, as the campaign, there's a push for going digital. But we also have to be very wary of the digital divide that there is, that is existing in the country. I mean, not everyone would have access, would have the hardware to to go to social media platforms, to read the pages of, um, of Comelec, of the candidates that they would want to support, to read the platforms from these in, um, internet channels. So that's one. And then another part of the, um, the risk assessment would be to identify points which can be weaponized, the, wherein the rules can be weaponized against, um, uh, against stakeholders. For example, um, for example, the triaging process, like right now, the upcoming Palawan plebiscite, the rules that have already been promulgated by Comelec would include a triaging process. Um, they would check the body temperature. And um, if you don't pass that uh, test, you'll be required to be checked up by a medical personnel. So uh, these points, they could be, yes, they could be very helpful, again, in um, managing the risk of transmission. But we also have to take into consideration that these um, uh, steps can also be weaponized to exclude and to disenfranchise um, certain sectors of uh, the voting population for the political gain of um, of a certain side of a certain candidate. Iserin Pujan would be uh, like, for example, during the campaign. Of course, uh, we encourage 
uh, we encourage the observance of occupancy limits, but yung implementation po ng mga occupancy limits na yon during the campaign can again be weaponized um against uh against a, a specific uh specific political party or specific candidates uh what we want um what we want to put emphasis in is to always strike a balance between of course observing the minimum health standards placing priority on that and also um uh, trying to be very vigilant on weaponizing these rules and uh, weaponizing these rules and to not and for these rules to not be ways to disenfranchise um, candidates uh, to disenfranchise the voters and other stakeholders. So and lastly, on top of it all, um, of course we we would want to push for a very inclusive decision making process that all the actors, um, political parties, uh, candidates, the voters should be included in the decision-making process. Uh, our our group, uh, we've um, we've been very uh, we've been very uh, we've allo allotted a lot of time um, in consulting with different stakeholders, including mga political parties, po, kasi we presented to them the steps or the standards that could be observed. And what do they think about it? Because, like, for example, for campaign, we know that the operators for this part of the electoral cycle are those that are administrators of political parties. So they'll be the ones who are number one in in actually complying with the rules. So they need to be uh, consulted. Kung kung possible pa ba siya? Kung feasible pa ba siya for the group? Okay. So yes, ma'am. And then yes, yeah, sorry, ma'am. Lastly, uh, uh, yes. uh, I think. Uh, Lent has been very diligent about submitting position papers, and given that yes. you've uh, conducted several focus group discussions, mm -hmm. um, your uh, findings and concrete recommendations would be very welcome to this committee. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we'll also uh, uh, forward here um, a, co a draft of a code of conduct that with uh, that is a product of these consultations. This would um, cover from registration until the post-election activities, wherein. We identify the um, standards that should be observed by each uh, each actor, each stakeholder okay. in each stage cycle. Thank Sige. you, thank um, you, Madam Chair. Na lang, abangan na lang namin. And then, uh, last but not least, I just got a message from uh, Dr. P. M. Hernandez of uh, UP College of Public Health, with very valuable input from uh, the WHO. Um, given that they have. Uh, um some findings already we invite dr hernandez please hi good morning po. Uh, i'm dr hernandez uh, from the up college of public health hopefully you can hear me adequately okay so hello good morning po. okay all right so thank you for uh, for giving me, uh, thank you uh thank you for giving me a chance to to share my uh Sorry. my inputs on this matter so uh, I forwarded the, the 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 correct link. Apologies for sending the incorrect one, but this is the WHO interim guidelines or guidance for uh, holding elections and other democratic activities in light of the pandemic. Uh, based on these guidelines, so, uh, basically, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to go to the meat of the matter so that Comelec could explore the link together with DFA, together with uh, DICT, to explore this very valuable link from Dr. Hernandez, wherein uh, the finding was that uh, electoral participation was maintained and even expanded on account of special voting arrangements adopted by various jurisdictions. Ito na yung pinag-uusapan natin, James, at uh, ni Senator Coco, na anong sinabi ni Dr. Uh, postal voting, advanced voting, mobile voting, assisted voting, proxy voting. So maybe, Doctor, uh, we can focus on those recommendations and get to the heart of the matter. Okay. Re regarding um, regarding that, po, um, so based on the WHO guidelines, there should be special arrangements. Well, number one, for uh, for persons on quarantine or isolation, po yung isang consideration. Number two. For uh, high-risk voters, nabanggit po yung mga persons with disabilities, saka uh, senior citizens. And number three, even the staff po, uh, they should also be considered, particularly those of high uh, high risk. So they should not be deployed in the uh, uh, during the voting process po. So those are the, uh, the recommendations uh, regarding remote voting and uh, institution-based voting, po, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
I see, I see. Uh, James, uh, you are uh, cognizant of uh, the studies uh, of the WHO. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are very cognizant of, of the need to safeguard the right to vote of even those persons who are uh, caught by the triage. Um, katulad po na nakonggit kanina ng lente, no? na meron tayong triage na, ano, na procedure kung saan itinatabi natin yung mga 37.8 na, na tao. Pero meron din po kasi kaming uh, hiwalay na polling precinct para sa mga ganyang klaseng tao. Pinag-aaralan uh, natin ngayon yung uh, ginagawa sa ibang bansa, yung, yung uh, dinadala yung uh, balota doon sa mismong mga quarantine centers. Um, so these are being studied right now and we hope that since sa, sa Palawan is not a big problem pa, it's not a big issue muna, but certainly sa 2022 magiging malaking issue yan. You know? There will be more people who will be in quarantine who will be allowed to vote otherwise. Kaso hindi naman natin, hindi yan sila pwedeng tanggalan ng right to vote just because may sakit sila. So, That's right. Um, opo. Clearly, 2022 will be much bigger. Yung ginagawa na natin, napag-usapan na natin yung advanced postal, mobile voting, yung assisted voting, ginagawa na rin, di ba, sa ating mga senior citizens. Yung proxy voting na nandito sa presentation ni Dr. Hernandez. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun, doktor? May boboto in your behalf? Mag-a-assign ka? May SPA ka, kumbaga? Ma'am, the proxy, ma'am, the proxy voting oh. post from Namfrel. Yes, that's right. And from Namfrel, Mr. Alvia. Uh, no, it's also contained. It's also contained in uh, the WHO uh, oh, okay. link. Uh, I okay, have it open in front of me, because I was yes. wondering kung ano yung imagine a proxy vote. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, if I may po, so I'm not sure of how to operationalize it, but in proxy voting, um, you, you can request another person to, to to vote on your behalf. Yeah, parang pagkaintindi ko, parang kang may SPA na may boboto para sa'yo, ganun. Ang ganun nga po. Ewan, hindi ko alam. Uh, any ideas, James? Senator Bob Rivera is with us. Bawal po sa atin yan, may batas tayo. Ayan, bawal na bawal sa atin yan. Yes, oh. Uh, Senator Coco, papayag ba tayo dyan sa proxy voting? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, yes, Coco. Ay, yung audio mo, parang patay yata. Hello? Yes, there we go. Yan. Naghang naman. Oo, ayan. Eh, pero okay lang. Naririnig ka naman. Uh, that requires major amendment to our election code. Yun na nga. Sobrang overhaul nun. Uh, kind of uh, overturns all the basic policies contained in election law. O, paano kaya yan? Yeah, so... And, and, I, anyway, it's just, I, a it's just a recommendation. Na... Yun na nga, yun na nga. It's just... Uh, off the top of my head, I'm wondering how they're doing it in other jurisdictions out of curiosity since, since we're obliged to explore all options. Thank you. Thank so, you, James, um, maraming salamat, Dr. Doctor and Eric. Uh, I think Eric and uh, Dr. Hernandez are referring to the same WH document that I have in front of me and that James is uh, very familiar with as well. So, uh, if our senators have no further questions, Senator Villar, Senator Coco, Francis, uh, Senator Bong Rivilla, um, if there are no further uh, comments, um, we will um, we will suspend this hearing. Uh, marami pa kasing uh, iba't ibang bill tungkol sa eleksyon. Tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo. Thank you very much for your participation. May we indeed be able to COVID proof the 2022 elections and let us not underestimate the challenges of the Palawan plebiscite that are that's forthcoming in March. Dahil uh, papunta lang sa Northern Palawan eh mahirap na, James. Kaya ingat din tayo diyan paghandaan ng maigi. Thank you very much to everyone. And happy, happy birthday to uh, former chairman, our Senate President, Coco Pimentel.
Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Happy birthday po, Senator Coco.